But let's ask them directly because we've got Grant somewhere. Grant, you there? Yeah, yeah, he's around. And Bilal, Bilal? Hey, look at him with his shades on. Hashtag cool dude. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Now this is part three of Bilal's 310 BHP. Well, I keep saying it, but fastest in the world MTA because um, yeah, I'm still yet to see another fastest MTA. Now in this video, you're also going to see Bilal take on a Focus RS. Now, a couple of pointers. This, this Focus RS was com definitely not standard, definitely tuned, definitely running some sort of power upgrades because Bilal's car is fast. <laughs>
adrenaline rush, man. <laughs> wow. Like the thing is, you lose all concept of speed. You know, you think you're going like you're hundred yeah, yeah. over hundred mile an hour, isn't it? <laughs> It stinks of clutch and brakes in here. It's not yours either, but oh man, that was good. How sick was that? I mean, that car, I just love the noise that car makes around the track. It just sounds so good. And you can clearly see from the video, guys, it is fast, but also how quick that focus was as well. So, and obviously tracks is a modified car show, so you expect nothing less for anything to be out on the track to be heavily modified. But it was a really, really close race between the pair of them and the RS wasn't getting away. And as you can see, lap after lap, Bellow was just getting better and better. But let's ask them directly, because we've got Grant somewhere. Grant, you there? Yeah, yeah, he's around. And Bilal, Bilal? Hey, look at him with his shades on. Hashtag cool dude. Right, so first question, Bilal, Grant, what was your initial reaction of the 310 bhp of bath around Silverstone? Uh, overall, really well. Um, there were certain things that surprised me. Um, and there was, and some of the things that surprised me you might think are a little questionable. So uh, the first thing that took me by surprise was, of course, um, how sensitive the sort of throttle was and how... Um, sort of aggressively um, it picked up. Um, it's quite a linear delivery of power um, and you could certainly feel that. Um, you know, there was no spikes, there was no histrionics, the car didn't just lurch forward, it was consistently accelerating the entire time, which is obviously great for track. But on the low, you know, on the lower end of the revs, when you're trying to come out of a corner and be a bit more progressive, um, sometimes, you know, it, it got obviously better as, you know, you realise, you know, what you're doing with it. But um, it, it was kind of almost a little too sensitive and it was kind of diving out of corners and sometimes provoking a little bit of um, uncertainty in the car. But I think that might be as much to do with getting used to the car on track as anything else. The car felt so good around the track. Uh, and I'm not just saying that. Um, the car was just pulling on the straights. Uh, felt extremely nimble around the corners. Uh, the whole car just felt perfect for me. Uh, the suspension set up extreme shock, same as the Biposto. Uh, the MTA box, obviously, it was, you know, quite, quite a different experience. Um, the gearbox, um, obviously, there's been this big debate for ages, you know, what's better, manual, auto, and everyone's always argued, man argued, uh, argued manual. Um, the auto was really impressive. Um, I mean, it is apparent that it is a single clutch. Um, you do get a bit of a step off between, say, third and fourth and things like that. Um, but to be honest, if I think the step was probably more apparent because the car is just making so much power. Um, you know, it makes that much power and momentarily it stops making that much power and then starts making that power again. So um, I think that's probably what accentuates it, if I'm honest with you. And certainly it was in when it was in manual mode, you didn't feel it as much. But the MTA in general was really good. Uh, dropped down to third, second gears out of the corner where I felt, you know, just exiting the corner accelerated so well. Uh, it was just such an enjoyable experience. It was. It was. It really was unreal. The, the car didn't skip a beat. It managed to take all the abuse we th threw at it. Managed to keep up with a uh, couple of cars. I think the car helped me more than I helped the car. Uh, especially if it was about looking good on track. Um, it was the car's performance, not my driving, which was uh, poor. I guess <laughs> it was meant to be an intermediate session. <clears throat> and I'm a complete newbie taking this car out on track. Um, overall, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I mean, I've not been in the car, admittedly, on the road, um, so I can't compare it. Um, and that is something to remember. The car is a road car, fundamentally. It was just, it was on a track session. It's not a track car, or even meant to be some sort of hybrid, you know, track um, uh, road car anyway. Um, but it just felt so at home. Some good answers from the pair of them. Right, next question, Grant and Bilal, I guess. So from Grant's perspective, how did it feel to go out around the track as a passenger? And I guess, Bilal, how did it feel to actually drive your own car around there, man? I was very nervous pre uh, before going out on track uh, about writing the car off. Obviously, there was a lot of time and effort, not, not only from me, but other people like Adam, who dedicated a lot of his personal time, uh, which I thank him for and uh, Grant also uh, into this build. Uh, it was amazing. It, it really was such an enjoyable experience getting to learn the car's capabilities, uh, being able to uh, open the car up and track. Uh, just the feeling out of the corners <laughs> was just, you know, something I haven't experienced before. And to know that this is, you know, 
a, you know, a reasonably small sized engine and to learn that the car is capable of, uh, you know, how it performed out on track, it was just really amazing. Uh, I'm really pleased. Uh, thank God, uh, number one, and obviously everyone who helped me uh, get through the journey. Uh, it was, just, you know, th thinking about it now, um, it was definitely worth all the effort and time. But yeah, it did quite well keeping up with uh, cars. Initially, I tried to try to keep up with Nico, obviously having the abuffs uh, up there. Uh, but Nico took that on. I think it, Grant was telling me he was on three wheels around the corner, which was quite funny. Um, obviously, I made some mistakes, dropped back. I'm not sure what happened if I gave way to the focus in the end, but that was spitting flames. Grant, how did you find Bilal um, as a driver? Obviously, you being passenger in the car, how was that for you? Yeah, where can I go again? <laughs> um, how did I find Bilal? Um, I think to honest with you, I mean, I don't think you'd even mind me saying this, is that I guess for the first few laps, um, nerves got the better of him. You know, it's, I guess it's one of those things, you know, you always you forget, even I forgot, I haven't been out track in ages, you know, you're going out there with probably 20 plus other cars of mixed performances you don't know anything about the drivers that are driving them you know some hurtle towards you at a million miles an hour seemingly not wanting the break and other people were out there for a sunday drive um apparently just looking for a parking space that's how <laughs> how slow they're going um so obviously there's that to deal with also of course you know this car has been a labor of love um and i know you probably won't mind me saying as well it's not it's not come cheaply so you're now putting your beautiful possession out on track and putting it on a bit of a risk you know am I going to hurt it um you know I don't want to do anything bad I don't want to blow it up I don't want to you know tear through the brakes I want someone else to crash into me I don't want to crash into them so I think that was all kind of going through his head um but you could see as the car was becoming the car was becoming more rewarding to him as he was sort of relaxing and and slowing into it you know I mean I know for a fact that he totally didn't want to come off um you know big smile from about here to here um and I think the highlight for him as well is that considering you know he was an absolute novice to the whole thing um you know we were chasing a mark ii focus rs that i now someone needs to probably correct me if i get this wrong you know it might be stage two or stage three i, I don't know how it quite works it was probably between 380 and 400 horsepower uh based on what i could see cannoning giant great big flames um and Bilal took great pride in not letting this car out of his sight <laughs> and i'm going to flick it the other way now Bilal, how did you find grant as an instructor first i was a bit nervous about having someone with me in the car uh but i think i needed it in the end it was just great i mean having grant there someone who really knows these cars you know quite inside out pretty much knows the car's capabilities taught me a lot about the car in terms of its performance uh you know when when to chuck it in round the corner when to put your foot down how the car performs out of the corners you know letting the car slide across while putting your foot down out of the corner uh the braking zones around the track uh it was just it was just a it was quite a big learning curve for me actually um so yeah uh, hats off to grant uh, a lot of respect there and uh, yeah, he really knows how to drive. So there it is, guys. That is all three. That is the trilogy complete of Bilal's uh, 310 BHP Monster. Uh, and obviously a huge thank you to Bilal for getting involved and Grant as well in this video and all the modified Abarth. So I enjoy continuing to make Abarth content whilst I say that sitting here uh, in a completely different car, which isn't an Abarth. But um, I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Make sure to smash the like button. It really does help the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you all very soon on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Just a couple of pointers that I just need to consider. So what happens, you get a phone call. Hello? Hey, I'm all right, I'm in the middle of filming a video right now.